As I was writing, I was thinking about um, how tough it is for a lot of us to monetize, to make a living out of our passion and joy of personal development, of helping others in their personal growth in whatever form you do that, whether it be physical fitness or whether it be psychological or whether it be in terms of diet or relationship or business. Um, I know it's a huge passion of many of your lives and you'd love to do it for a living, um, but you can't because there isn't seemingly the willingness, especially I'm thinking here in England and Europe, there isn't the willingness to pay for personal development. That a lot of people know they need it and want it, but they don't want to pay for it. This is not true around the world, I want to say to you, because as I've traveled more over the last, you know, 20 or so years, uh, I've realized that this, this stinginess, I suppose, if that's what it is, this, um, this mentality of, I want something free and cheap, and I don't see personal development wisdom as something that should be paid for. Um, it's not a physical product that I need to pay for. What do I get physically in my hand in exchange for it? <laughs> Uh, I don't know what it is here, but I do think it's a lot to do with the culture and history of our various countries. America, for instance, is a very performance-based culture, and this assists people's interest in personal development and human flourishing and personal improvement and coaching and mentoring is a major part of mainstream life in America for lots of people because America has evolved as an individualistic performance-based culture. Governmentally, it is a republic, not a democracy, strictly speaking. Uh, and a republic is governed by the rule of law rather than the rule of the people. I say that uh, generally without getting in depth on it, to say that all of this enhances this sense of individualistic, non-one-size-fits-all mentality in humans, which makes them seek out bespoke personal development help. This is not so much true in Europe, and especially in Northern Europe. Um, it's in, of interest to me, and maybe it's not you, but I find it fascinating. The last thousand years or so of European history has been interesting in a Northern and Southern European divide. The Vikings conquered Northern Europe and, the, and colonized it for hundreds of years. And the Romans conquered and colonized Southern Europe for hundreds of years. These two um, colonization um, groupings of people had different forms of governance. So the Vikings were very egalitarian in their government style. Everybody was kind of equal to everybody else. And it's left a legacy in Northern Europe of egalitarian mentality amongst our societies so that people feel threatened by leadership and threatened by performance and threatened by someone doing better than they are. The tall poppy syndrome, we call it here, um, in the UK, you have your versions of it around the world where we are threatened by and pull someone down that we feel is assuming some posture um, that makes them come across like, well, they think they know better than us. Who do they think they are? It is, it is ingrained in our Northern European belief system. I think it is not least rooted in the Viking colonization that continues to hand us generationally an egalitarian um, we're all as we all know as much as we all have as valid opinion as uh, the next person, and that's true to some degree, but it's not true in terms of expertise and wisdom and education and things that people know that we don't know that we could learn from. Southern Europe was colonized by the Romans, that were a more hierarchical structure of governance, and therefore, Southern Europeans are much more open, I think, to the idea of personal development and coaching and paying for that than we are in the north of Europe. Of course, there's no clear divide now these days. North and Southern Europe have blended into each other, so we are a mix of each. But I do think around the world, the Americans are much more open, as are the Australians, as are the Indonesians and the Singaporeans. And so I think, I want to say to my contemporaries here, in Europe and especially north of Europe, just keep going. We need what you're doing. Times are changing. Uh, there's a shift coming around the world where people are getting much more aware of their need for investment in this way. So your day, my day is coming increasingly. We just need you to keep going. Eh? Thank God for the internet. Thank God for social media because you can reach beyond your backyard. You can reach beyond your culture. 
into the world. So please keep going. I know social media can be very discouraging too because you're not just fighting um, uh, the content out there that's competing with your content, but you're fighting algorithms that are stacked against us. And so don't be defined, don't let your content be defined by likes or views. Um, you put your best work out and there seems to be no likes or views. A lot of that's to do with algorithms that put you down the pecking order because you are not as important to Facebook and Instagram uh, because of your level of followership as some others are. So we're all battling that too. But I want to encourage you guys to keep going. I'm sending out love and prayers to all of you today who feel a calling a vocation and a dream one day to monetize that, to make a living from that. I hope you will. I hope you can. I think times are changing to make that more possible in the coming years. So just keep going. Be encouraged. It's not you. It's the culture. It's not you. It's the belief system often inside which you're trying to do what you're doing. But I promise you, um, times are changing and we need what you're bringing. So just keep going. This message is to say to you guys from beautiful Yorkshire, just keep going and keep growing and flourishing. We need what you bring in. All right. Much love and blessing to you guys today. Cheers.